This is Brent Barnhart with the AccuFeed feeder, and I'm going to go over a couple of the settings here on the uh, on the feeder here. Uh, the most important thing to get this thing um, to produce best is has really not much to do with the buttons. There's there's not much to the buttons, but you have to set up your your shingling here um, correctly, and there's a lot of really nice features on here. Um, if you've ever worked on these types of feeders before. It's always frustrating when you can't get the tops and the bottoms um, perfectly level. The way they, a lot of the feeders mount up, you can't keep them perpendicular. Well, our feeder, you can get, you can get it perfectly straight from the bottom to the top and they will stay perfectly straight. Um, that has to do with the way our rail system is made and the adjustments here in the front and that. Uh, they tighten right up and it will stay where you don't have any wiggle room at all at the top here. So your cars you can, will stay nice and even. Now one thing that we have on our feeder here is what I'm most proud of is our pre-shingling device. Um, down in here we have a rubber foot that helps shingle your pieces so that you can go anywhere from very thin stock to very thick books. and. Um, this, when set properly, just absolutely will not allow a double feed to go through. I mean, it, it is an excellent, excellent feeder. But what we have here on ours is a pre-shingling device. And um, you're able to take your wrench here, and you can raise and lower your metal to get your cards heading up underneath the friction head, you're able to get them to shingle out ahead of time so that the actual number of cards that are piling up against the friction head are only several cards. And uh, th this actually is an outstanding feature that I have thought for the last 20 years belonged on many feeders. And uh, I'm not even sure there's any feeders that have it. Um, also on our feeder, you can come over here and uh, just gently loosen the side bolts and you can raise and lower the side guides. The side guides go down below the belts. That way it keeps your piece running straight as it comes down the feeder. So you can adjust these side guides any way you want. Um, right now I have them adjusted so that they are just slightly above um, where they're not hitting, obviously they're not hitting the uh, shafts that are running below. I just take and loosen them up and uh, take them down until they um, hit the shaft and then I just raise them up just a little bit so they're not rubbing and then I tighten them up and I find that's a that's a really and you're, you're well you're well below your belt to keep your piece running straight now in order how do you set these pre shingling devices well you can try different ways to get it to run best but what I do is I take a stack of cards that I'm gonna run and I start off with putting putting the stack in right here on one side and I just let it come down by gravity and uh, touch. There's no reason to over tighten these bolts. I mean, they're not, it's not going anywhere. So just a simple snug it up. Raise this up, take the same number of cards, come over here, and then just let this come down. Don't push on it, just let it come down naturally. And then just lightly tighten that up. And then those are your pre shingling devices. And then I take one single card, slide it in and I go under the rubber friction feet down here and um, I set those so that they're even. If it's coming out crooked, you can, you can set either friction foot here um, so that they, they are tighter or looser. That way you can control the drag on each end of the card. If a card is thicker on one end or thinner, you can also have one higher than the other. So it, it's a nice feature. Um, in order to Move your side guides here. We have just some simple thumb nuts and you can pick up this whole apparatus. And that way you can slide this out further if you want to get over top of a belt. That way you're not constantly adjusting your side guides. Here, here you can see your two friction feet that we were talking about in the video. So you can adjust those left to right and get those positioned anywhere you want. And then just simply just slides right back down into the frame. And off you go. A very forgiving um, feeder, 
Um, we've put it on many machines the last five years, but we're now just offering it uh, retail as well. It also, um, we have a collating system coming out, selective collating, and um, it, it's great for like, if you want to batch and go right into your shrink wrapper, um, we have drop trays that it feeds into, and it'll jog um, using air paddles, and then once you reach your count, the, the bottom opens up and it drops them straight down on your conveyor belt. So lots of different options. This here is your shingling device, and this, this is when you're, you go to um, load your feeder. I always like to put one card in. Put one card in, get it up against the friction head. Take your, take your other cards, shingle them out nice, put them in. Your side guys don't need to be overly tight, but then again, you don't want them too loose either. Then once you have those in, you want to set this so that the cards are sliding off of it. Just nicely sliding off as they arrive. That way, the more cards we put in, all this extra weight is not going to affect it the way it feeds. This job, you can fill this all the way to the top here if you want, but you'll, you'll have to play with your settings. Your, your pre-shingling device, you can move it down a little bit lower if you're getting doubles. You can adjust your rubber feet. Obviously, that's your main control for doubles. Um, you want to control how much weight is sitting on the belts with how many you put in. You're going to do that with this right here, and I can maybe do some more videos on that and some uh, consult your manual. You'll find that as well. And uh, in the next video, I'll go around to the other side and show you some of the features over there uh, and different attachments that we have. So this is very important here. You can adjust your sides independently. You can also uh, make these crooked. If there was some reason you wanted one to be wider at the top, um, there's an adjustment for that on the other side. So you can actually askew, you can skew these um, so that they're, they're not perfectly straight, that they're angled. Um, just, just unlimited options on what you can do here on the feeder end of this. And uh, this, this particular machine will do on-demand, continuous feeding. It'll do batching, on-demand and batching. And um, two of these are going out that'll be feeding onto a lugged conveyor. And it'll be doing batching, on-demand. So as the lugs come by and the eye is tripped, there's a simple attachment over here for a photo eye or a dry contact switch a limit switch, a foot pedal, um, a button, anything you can put over here to, to, to trigger the machine. And when the conveyor comes down and this is triggered, it'll squirt eight cards onto the conveyor as it keeps on moving. And then it'll just keep putting eight cards, eight cards, eight cards, eight cards. So it's on demand and also batching at the same time. Excellent little feeder.